Hey guys, in this video we are going to continue with um, the simple API that we created in the last video and we're going to fix something that nece isn't necessarily an error but is definitely something that we can improve, uh, which is validation. So let me just show you what the uh, concept is and we'll see how we can fix it and how we can also fix it to where it becomes more production ready. So. I'm going to send this request in Postman to the to the uh, Post API, and you'll notice here that the title is blank. And if we look at the um, body, we see that we get an error um, that is not a elegant looking error at all. Uh, that is telling us that there is an integrity constraint from the database and that the title cannot be null and then it is actually spitting out the SQL um, that it received. So this is clearly not an error message that we could have or use for our API and if we want to enforce rules like the title being blank or the body being required or you know email being in a specific way Laravel gives us uh, a lot of tools to use to uh, to enforce those rules. So let's start to work on what those tools are and how we can update our API so that it is more um, more ready for data. You know, more production ready. Okay, so let's go into the store function and if you look at this store function you, you'll see that it is fairly simple. All we are doing is taking a request and we are creating a model from it and then we're sending back positive results and that's the reason why we're getting the error that we are getting when we send bad data through. So the first thing that we can do because this is something that is um, very uh, simple, we could just create a, uh, an array. And I've already created some code, so I'm going to copy this code uh, from my um, little notes here so that we can save time. And you don't necessarily have to watch me type. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a uh, we're going to create a request validate uh, function, and we are going to set the results to validated. And really, what we're doing here is we're using a function that already exists on this request object that is called validate, and we can pass it uh, several different things. But really, what we're passing here is two different um, arrays. So basically, this first array is what sets up the rules. So you can see here that we're saying the title is going to be uh, required and this little pipe symbol here is what you can do to tag on more rules. Um, for example, this one I've set it to a max length of 10. Now there's no reason for it to be a max length of 10. This is just a test, um, but I wanted to make it something short that was easy to type out. And then, you know, body, we're setting that to being required. And then we have, it's a little bit difficult to see, but I'll, I'll try to remove it here so that you can get a better idea of what we're talking about. So this is one parameter, this array right here, right? That sets up the rules. And then another array that you can send um, is a messages array. So I'm going to paste back the code that we had before. And you can see here, that basically there's another array that we're sending through that also has an error for some reason right now. Uh, so let's try to see if we can figure that out. That's because there's an extra quote in there. So, and then we're also missing a per, uh, comma at the end. Okay, so this second array is the messages array. And you'll see here that title, title, required, required, title, title, max, max. And that's kind of sort of how it matches up. It doesn't necessarily need to be in that order, but really what Laravel gives us is a ability to create various different messages for the different parts of the data that could be wrong. So for example, you see here title is required. Um, you see here title must be less than 10, must be 10 characters or less and then you know body is required so let's run this in postman 
and see what the result is. So now that we have our blank title, we should be able to send this request through Postman and we should get a much more um, robust title. And we're not going to get that because I remember now that we have not updated one thing, but this is something that I wanted to show anyway. Okay, so the request that we did get back was this little uh, blade template that I have created to show something that did uh, mess me up for a good long while. Um, and this blade template is just has a header and it is showing uh, here down in the middle that we are getting back a uh, an error bag uh, object, which is basically um, how Laravel puts together errors into things called bags, um, and those bags can have names. So we're getting this error and we're getting this page, but we don't know what we did wrong on our request. And the reason for that is because we need to update one more thing on our request. Because this is an API, and because we're not, you know, going to be dealing with users, and so therefore uh, a template is not necessarily the best idea. Sorry, dog's barking. Okay, seems like he stopped. Okay, so be like I said, because we're dealing with an API, and we're not necessarily expecting to be using... Uh, anything or be dealing with a user, we're going to be dealing with uh, a, an application, we're going to set this header to accept and then we are going to say we're going to accept JSON. And basically what we're doing is we're saying this application is going to send a request but if you want to send back JSON, go ahead and send me back JSON, I can totally deal with that. And we're going to send this request one more time with our updated header and now you'll see that we get an appropriate error message. We get the title is required and we get more information if we wanted to about what the error actually is. And if we put something in here that was even longer, like more than 10 characters, um, we could send this and we should get back a error message that says that the title must be 10 characters or less. See, there you go. And I, know, I get the irony that the error message is longer than the actual error or the, the data that we're accepting. But again, this is just a test, so don't necessarily get hung up on the, the details there. I'm just showing you that you can do these things. Um, so now that we have the title, uh, let's go ahead and put in an actual title that will work. <clears throat> So let's just do test nine. And we'll see that basically the request is indeed working. So now you see that we have a uh, request and we are getting the appropriate data back, which is great. Um, so this method totally works um, because it's simple and because there's not a lot of stuff that we're checking. Um, this will work, um, but say for example we have something that maybe is a little bit more complicated and has a little bit more fields and stuff like that, like maybe we're doing stuff on four different fields and we have three or four different things that we're checking and you know this this area could get a little weird especially when you're just really wanting to look at the store function. So that's the reason why we can create another kind of object that is called a request object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a new terminal for our app in, uh, in, the doc in our Docker containers. Let's pull this over here and let's see if we can do the Okay, that's already set as default, which is great. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a request object. So we're going to use the PHP artisan make request and we're going to call it store post request. I'm going to hit enter on this and it should only take it a second 
Sometimes these take a little bit longer because I'm recording. Okay, so now it was created and if we go into our file explorer and we go to the requests folder which is in app HTTP requests, open this store request, we have this new file and we're going to update this so that it makes so that it works. First off, this authorize function, you're going to want to set this to return true for right now because we're not we haven't set up any kind of sort of user login or anything like that. We can do that, but that's not what we're going to be working on. So it won't work if you don't set this to true because by default it's false and you'll get a 404 error. And then the next thing that we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the rules section of the post controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this little bit of code. I'm actually going to cut this little bit of code out and we'll move it over. So we're going to move over to the store function, or I mean the store post request in the rules function. And I'm going to paste this code in here. And I need to clean this up a little bit, so need to get rid of this little bit of code at the beginning and basically whittle this down to just the array. And I'm going to cut out the messages array, and you'll see why in a second. And I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of this, and we will clean this up so we can... Nope. I just want to get the indentation a little bit more correct. There we go. And so now we have the rules that we had before. And now we're going to create one more function that is called public function messages, plural. And we're going to paste this code into here. And we're going to put a return. Hit escape on that. And so these two new functions are really just returning an array, and one of them is going to uh, be able to uh, validate the rules that we have set up, and another one is not uh, necessary for this to work, but again, showing that you can create a, another function called messages that will actually return your custom error messages for the things that you're looking for. Now, here's where we need to do most of our work to make this new functionality uh, useful. We need to um, update the controller. So what we're going to do first is we're going to pull in our new class. So we're going to use app um, HTTP and it's going to be in the quests folder and it is called store post request. So that's going to bring in our new file and I'm just going to copy this name because I'm actually going to use this object a couple of times. I'm going to update this note to be uh, more appropriate to what the parameter is. That's not necessary but it's good. I'm going to update the parameter of the function. This is necessary and this is what's going to uh, tell Laravel that instead of just a plain old request object we're going to use a store post request object and now we need to work on the function that is actually going to do the validation for us. So we're going to create a variable called validate and we are going to set it to request validated past tense request all. So now we're sending the request data to the new validation class that will be brought in for us and then we are going to take that data and we are going to call a, a variable called clean post and we are going to set that to the request safe which will do a little bit of a escaping characters and, and uh, stuff like that for us. So always a good thing to do. Again, stuff coming in from the outside world is not to be trusted, right? And so title, 
Oh, and so, uh, so we're scrubbing the request data after it's been val after it's been run through our validation class, and then we're using this only function. And I'm going to list the data type, the uh, data attributes that I want right here that are the only things that I'm interested in, which will also help keep the data clean so that when, um, when we're sending it to the model, it is only the specific data that we have scrubbed. And then we're going to just send the clean post through to the model. So we should be completely updated now with our uh, store function. So let's test this out one more time in Postman. So what we're going to do is we're going to first get rid of the title. So we should see a, a JSON error. Like I said, this is taking it a while because I'm recording. And we do. We see the error that the title is required. And if we do another test, so we would say test 10, and hopefully it's less than 10 characters, we'll send that, and we should get back a success message, which we do. So there you go, guys. This is a better way of doing what we did before, which was, you know, just to have the validation logic in our post controller. That's going to get a little bit weird if the validation logic gets to be too complex and stuff like that. So creating a, a request object and then uh, doing the um, all of the data there is uh, preferable because then it'll keep the logic of the controller uh, kind of cleaner and easier to see. So I hope this video was useful for you guys and as usual thank you very much.